We have a, a, a little secret uh, which is pretty simple to, to do if you're really willing to do it, which is to remember that what directs what we do is science uh, and data as opposed to uh, people saying, you know, this is what we have to work on. The right way to do things is to let the science tell us where to go. And our scientists are pretty good at, uh, at doing that. And we don't worry too much uh, uh, when we're doing the science about what the commercial opportunity is because no one's particularly good at predicting that. And if we, we have an opportunity to do something that's even not commercially important but medically important, we just announced an initiative in, in Ebola, for example, we'll do that as well. Uh, the bottom line is you want to follow the science because that tells you what can be uh, done and what can't be. Of course, you need great scientists uh, who can lead that scientific approach. Um, and so another philosophy we have at Regeneron is to remember that the management team works for the innovators as opposed to the other way around. Management's role is to create an environment, provide resources, and be responsive to the needs of the innovators. So we believe we work for the innovators. We've become one of the largest biotechnology companies in the world, a market cap of over $50 billion. So uh, people have to understand that these these successes come because risk is rewarded and people were con willing to continue to finance and invest because they thought at the end of the day there was a sufficient reward. So we, we have to figure out a system and I've got a few concrete ideas that, that I'm trying to get uh, going which is one of the things we might do is provide greater incentives for more breakthrough products. So. There's nothing wrong with a next generation or so-called Me Too or slightly improved product. They, they all make a difference, a more convenient product, what have you. But if there's no treatment for a certain type of cancer, that would be a big breakthrough. But those are harder to come by. They're more risky. So we should have almost a greater reward. And one of the ideas that I've been toying with and seeing if it'll get some traction is whether or not we can increase the exclusivity period or the patent rights to those drugs that have the greatest chance to being or, or are defined as a breakthrough. And so we incent people to work on the breakthroughs. Right now there's a little bit of a disincentive because you can make as much money on a Me Too in some people's minds as you can on a breakthrough. Um, and so naturally people tend to work on a little risk, less risky things. For those of us who are you know, a company that's a science-driven company, obviously we want to make the big break breakthrough that's sort of in our DNA. I personally am a big believer uh, that the reason that the United States uh, is the best at discovering new drugs and new treatments is because we have a perfect storm. This system of NIH, university-based research, our entrepreneurial spirit, our venture capital, and our capital market system is a great system that promotes great discoveries. And we should be supporting all aspects of it. We should be increasing the funding for basic research at the NIH. We should encourage venture and risk capital. We should make sure there's appropriate rewards at the back end. This is a national treasure. Our biomedical research system, from the basic research all the way through the biotechnology companies that bring products to market and our healthcare system, it's a unique model. I think that planned obsolescence through generics is a terrific system. In the uh, drug world, this limited life span of a patent creates an enormous incentive to continue to innovate. Otherwise, you're out of business, it's just a matter of time. And I think that's a great system. And it's, it's such a great system, and a lot of people don't realize it's part of our Constitution. The patent system is embedded in the Constitution of the United States that Congress shall have the right to promote the useful arts and sciences by granting patents. Um, our founding fathers got this right. We need, when you make a great invention, a great innovation, you need a patent. But they also were smart to realize that patents should be of a limited duration. So I really like this system because it forces you not to rest on your laurels. There's nothing like a patent cliff to make sure that you're still innovating. Uh, the only question is, is where do you draw it? 
Is it 10 years, 12 years, is it seven years? You know, right now we have 12 years of exclusivity of data for a biologic. I don't worry about biosimilars because that's what we're in business to do is to constantly reinvent ourselves, which we're doing every day. I would say uh, exciting. Uh, I would say innovative and I would say uh, patient focused. We think in 10 year cycles and I, I, I'm perfectly happy if, those, if that is what we were known by 10 years from now.